Most games start with a gentle tutorial to ease you into things so that it doesn't become too overwhelming too quickly. Maybe they'll teach you how to walk in a straight line, or jump. Or if they're one of the games on this list, maybe they'll try and f***ing murder you. Here are seven more games that try to kill you almost immediately, because welcome to the real world, idiot. Enjoy! There's a dead body behind the hostile cafeteria. And a strike that's about to become a war. Precinct 57 sent their finest. Precinct 41 sent... Disco Elysium is a detective game that aims to introduce to a video game RPG some of the freedom of choice of tabletop role-playing, where the only limit is your imagination. Well, your imagination and how grumpy your DM is feeling that day. That's certainly what it feels like if you start the game with a specific character build which can lead to you dying in the very first room before you've even had a chance to put any clothes on. When making a custom character build in Disco Elysium, you're given points in which to invest in certain attributes, such as intellect and physique. If you decide that you want your detective to be a Columbo type, super smart but maybe lacking in physicality, you might choose to put all your points into intellect and psyche, and have the minimum single point in physique. If you do that, however, there's a solid chance that when the game begins and you need to turn off a light, you suddenly suffer a massive heart attack and die. All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face. Like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. Well, guess that's my detective career over. Next time I'll avoid doing anything strenuous and just spend my time sitting in chairs. You feel something in your chest. An unnatural pressure. It's spreading to your left arm. Your jaw. Killed by an uncomfortable chair. Man, being a detective is dangerous work. It's become something of a staple of From Software games to throw you in at the deep end, from their early King's Field games, all the way through the Soul series. And the latest From Software game, Elden Ring, is no exception, letting you create your character and then plunging you directly into a stand-up fight with something called the Grafted Scion, a terrifying body horror nightmare of fused limbs and torsos that has a shield, a big sword, too many faces, and an unquenchable thirst for murder. As with other Souls games, it is possible to beat the Grafted Scion at this point, but really, it's here to get you used to the idea of dying, because guess what? You're going to be doing it a lot in Elden Ring. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. If you say so, lady. Still, now you've got some idea about how things work, hopefully it'll be a while before you... No, okay. This is going to be a long game. Where the hell am I? Resident Evil Village does a pretty good job of letting you know what you're in for at the start of the game by having its initial scene of domestic bliss shattered by a SWAT team bursting in and machine gunning your wife Mia! before having you attacked by some kind of monster and then getting most of your hand bitten off. But that all pales in comparison to when you arrive at the village itself, no more than ten minutes after pressing start, and are set upon by dozens of snarling, feral lichens... ...and a giant monster dude with an enormous hammer. And then you just have to try and survive until you reach safety. And by safety, I mean someone shoots you in the leg with an arrow and everyone just wanders off in a cutscene. <laughs> Where's everyone going? Bingo? Also, one of you has my fingers. Can I get those back, please? Welcome to the Ninth World. You've just traveled one billion years into the future. Many great civilizations have arisen, thrived, and eventually perished in that time. Now another world struggles for survival and perhaps even its own greatness. 
Torment, Tides of Numenera is a beautifully dark RPG that sees you do such incredible things as don a living suit of armor, team up with a multi-dimensional woman, and explore a labyrinth inside your own brain. There's much to discover in the Ninth World, even places like the Castoff's Labyrinth, which lies beyond time and space. But it's possible to miss all of that because you loaded up the game and then died before you even got to the character creator. Your mind wakes in darkness. Aching cold sets into an unfamiliar body. That's because when Torment Tides of Numenera begins, you are torn from a cocoon and suddenly falling, with no concept of where you are or how far you are from the ground. Or even if there is a ground. You are falling, the world many kilometers beneath you. You're given some options. Maybe you want to flatten out and try and catch the wind. Or try to calculate the distance to the ground. Or maybe you want to speed up and see if there's anything down there. Put your hands to your sides and you slice through the air. Choose that option and you get another choice, which includes another option to keep diving. I mean, we've come this far, right? The phrase whispers itself into your mind. Terminal velocity. Choose that one and you reach terminal velocity and are told you can feel your descent starting to slow. Great news, that must have been the right option, yes? As your skin explodes and your organs liquefy on impact, a brief thought flashes through your mind. Your life was utterly and completely meaningless. Oh, guess not. You know what, that's on me. The Immortal is a 1991 Sega Genesis game in which you play a wizard exploring a dungeon who is tasked with rescuing the wizard Mordemir, who is being held captive many levels below. Or at least you are if you can make it out of the first room. As soon as the game starts, you receive a message telling you what you're supposed to be doing, and then you take at most two steps towards the only door out of this room before a warning message pops up telling you that it might be a good idea to move. And then, if you take a second to ponder what that could possibly mean, some kind of worm thing busts through the floor and kills you. Okay, so I survived the immortal for, let's see, four seconds. That's pretty much the opposite of being immortal, if I'm honest. Luigi is invited to a hotel getaway. One where he may never get away. You have to feel for Luigi. Mario gets all the cool platform games, and when Luigi finally does get his own franchise, it's about him being trapped in giant buildings with ghosts, the thing he is more afraid of than anything else in the entire world. That being said, you think he'd have learned his lesson after the two previous Luigi's Mansion games, where he was tricked into going into buildings that later turned out to be ghost mansions, so it's hard to have much sympathy when he gets invited to a luxury hotel called The Last Resort, which is staffed by obvious ghosts in masks, and then immediately reveals itself to be a haunted hotel, actually. Surprise. Of course, there isn't much time to think about all of that because almost as soon as you start actually playing and the hotel has turned all haunted, you get confronted by King Boo, who makes it clear that he's captured all the other Mario characters in paintings and Luigi is next. <laughs> And then suddenly you're in a desperate race for your life against King Boo, who is absolutely wrecking house, destroying furniture, vanishing doorways, and it has to be said, sounding like he's having the time of his life. The chase ends one of two ways. Either you make it to the end of the corridor and dive down a laundry chute, or King Boo catches you, and we're treated to the sight of Luigi's anguished face being immortalized forever in the world's most distressing painting. Man, short game. Does kind of feel like the canonical ending though, so I think we'll let it slide. Can you hear me? Are you having difficulty speaking? Can you move your head? Just nod if you can hear me. You start Metal Gear Solid 5 in a hospital bed where, thanks to the events of prologue game Ground Zeroes, you have lost an arm but gained a big chunk of shrapnel sticking out of your forehead. The fragments are lodged deep within your cerebral cortex. Not a great deal. 
both of which came as something of a surprise during the game's first mission in which you escape the hospital with a mysterious bandaged stranger called Ishmael, whose voice might sound familiar if you aren't distracted by how he has his ass out the whole time. This isn't gonna work. We better take the elevator. But there's no time to think about either of those things, because while the pace of this hospital escape might be glacial, thanks to Snake's withered and atrophied limbs, the danger you are in is very real, as a paramilitary hit squad roams the hospital corridors, gunning down anyone they cross paths with. It's a real trial by fire in the game's stealth mechanics, so I hope you were paying attention in the… well there hasn't really been a tutorial, so I guess I hope you played Ground Zeroes? I mean, really, because a lot of this stuff isn't going to make sense otherwise. Or even if you have played Ground Zeroes. Kojima, eh? What's he like? So those were seven more video games with absolutely zero chill that try to kill you straight out the gate. Got any other favourites we missed? Let us know in the comments, and make sure to like, subscribe and check out the OX Supporters Club at patreon.com forward slash OX Club if you like what we do here and want to support the channel. Thanks for watching.